always some God want each and every one of us to take from it. You know, what I need is not necessarily what you need. So I'm sure he has some for each and every one of us. So let's pray that God's word won't go back over to see. Let's pray for the sick. Reflect the way of they might be. Lord God, we come once again as long as we know how, thanking you and praising you for all that you have done for us. Yes. You've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We just come to say to Father to thank you. Thank you. All thank that you. helped us. We come asking that you forgive us for all our transgressions this evening, Father. We thank you for waking us up this morning, Father, starting us out on a brand new day, been coming since the beginning of time. We just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, Father. <coughs> Who hung, bled, and died out on Calvary just for the remission of, of our sin, Father. That's how much you love us, that you gave up your only begotten Son. And we just want to say thank you this morning. We come ask the blessing upon our pastor this morning, Father. Bless him, Lord. We ask that you touch him right now, Father. Please, Lord, touch him. As he en route back to the church, Father, just watch over him and let him ride back safe and sound, Father. We just give you all the praise and all the honor. We thank you for him right now, Father. We come asking that you bless the past that's going to be our guest this evening, Father, that you touch him and give him strength and courage, Father. Let him be bold in delivering the message that you have given him to give to us. Yes. And we pray now that we receive the message this evening, Father. Whatever you have in the message for each one of us, Father, yes, open our minds and open our hearts that we receive it, Father. That we will take it and use it to guide our lives, to make our life better, Father. And not only that, Father, if it needs to be shared with someone that might just might need a little encouragement from the, your word, Father, that we be able to encourage them, Father. Bless the sick afflicted wherever they might be, Father. We, we know you're already there, Father, but you told us to ask, and we ask you right now, Father, to bless those who and in need this evening, Father. The body is wrapped in pain. The doctor has said the last word. But we know because we've seen your work. And we know what you can do, Father. <clears throat> Touch right now, Father. Father God, we just need you right now, Father. We ask that you bless people in Florida that are going through the hurricane damage, Father. Bless those in Georgia and Carolina also, Father. We know the loss was great, Father. But we know you are able to fix and give our homes back, Father. But we ask that you just touch each and every one of us that, that are going through that storm, Father. Let them know, Father, that yes, they lost the home. But do they have a ticket to their final home? That's what they really need to know. Stop and think. Do I have the other ticket? to my eternal home, Father. That's what's important. Well. But 
but we thank you for what you already have done. We thank you for what you're going to do. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. Oh, Jesus is on. Thank you. 
so glad that he loves me even when I act Stone. Lisa, Lisa, you can stand up. You ain't that old. You younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I just he loves me when I'm just stupid. You know, and act a
uh, my lot of family, amen. amen. It's good to be here. Um, our hearts are still praying for the victims of the hurricane. Yes, uh, we did have um, uh, this little breeze in Augusta. It don't take much for us, man. Uh, hard rain just shut the city down. Yeah. You know, so everybody's panicking and they close everything. You know what I'm saying? They go close everything, the sun's still out. Uh, but they closed everything, and all the flights were delays and kept back. But, but thank God we're here. Amen. We're here. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We're here. Not our blood pastors like Dr. White and uh, different pastors all over the uh, country. We have an opportunity to really look at what I call the passionate part of our faith. Amen. And the passionate part of our faith is the family. It's got to be family. And the reason why it's got to be family because that's how God established his relationship with us. It's a foundational relationship. That he has with us, and we practice our faith at home. Amen. Mm -hmm. Nobody practice their faith at church. Yeah. You come to church to get equipped. Amen. 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 And you practice your faith at home. Amen. 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 You want to know who you are? Who are you when you leave church? Because right. everybody holds it for a couple of hours yeah. on Sunday morning. Yeah. But when you leave the church, then folk will know who you really are. Amen. Amen. One of the things that we have to do, and I've been trying to, to illuminate this to our church in the beginning, because God is a God of what's called purpose. Amen. God doesn't bless anything that's outside of his purpose. If God doesn't own it, he will not bless it. Yeah, right. One of the most powerful scriptures in the Bible is Romans 8, 28. We quote it all the time. Yeah. And we know that all things work, work together for good to those that love the Lord and those who are called according to his what? And when you look at the idea of purpose, of God's going to bless purpose, then this one word that you need to always keep in mind is called creative design. And what do you mean by creative design? It simply means this, that the purpose of a thing can never be defined by the creative. It can only be defined by the creator. Because only the creator know why he made it. Amen? A cop don't know the purpose of his being. But the maker of the cup knows. And what is really wrong with the church, what is wrong with many of us, is that we are the creative, trying to find our own purpose when we didn't make ourselves. You'd be surprised at how many people go to how many careers, five, six different careers, trying to find what they really made to do. Amen? And all they had to do was ask their creator. You know why marriage is not working? Because you married to somebody that's not in your purpose. Mm -hmm. That person was not purpose for you. Mm -hmm. And because of that, God couldn't bless it because he didn't own it. No. So you got to look at creative design and you got to ask yourself, is my life according to the purpose of the creator that made me? Amen. Amen. And why do you got to go to the creator? Because the creator said you'll never figure out on your own. He said, my ways are just not your ways. And my faults are never be your faults. So you'll never know how I do things, and you never know how I think about anything. And that's why he wrote a book, so you can read it, so you wouldn't have to think about it. Amen? Yeah, what, what do you think? Let me tell you something. Uh, it's amazing, but I, 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 I share this experience everywhere I, I go. I was doing a conference in Albany, Georgia. And man, I knew I had a toothache when I got there. And that's the most aggravating thing in the world. So after I did the first night, I told my host, man, get me to the emergency room. I got to have something done about this too. Tonight. He said, well, I got an orthodontist at my church. I said, you do? He said, yeah, let me call her. That lady was so nice, she had me come to her office at 11 o'clock at night. And I went to the office and she said, Pastor Block, I can't pull that team. She said, you need it. But what I'm going to do is a root canal. I said, tonight? She said, I'm going tonight. And that, girl, that lady did me a root canal that night. And I was really kind of reluctant at her doing it, but she said, I'm not going to charge her. <laughs> All that worked out. <laughs> and, and, and go ahead and rule me. And then the root canal said you got an infection in your mouth, so I'm going to some antibiotics. And uh, you know, I'm a good antibiotics. She gave me a, a big 
big old thing, I, I appeals the tape yeah. and all that stuff. And also, you know, I don't like medicine. So I took a couple of days, fever broke, start feeling better. So I didn't take it anymore. By the time I got back to Augusta, man, that infection was right back. Yeah. And I was burning up with a fever, and I went to my orthodontist. And I said, that woman ain't nothing but a quirk. <laughs> and I was fussing, man. She's nothing but a quirk. And I said, no, 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 no. And so he said, well, what did she do? I said, she did a root canal. He said, open your mouth and look at it. He said, she did an excellent job on that root canal. Did she give you any antibiotics? I said, she sure did. And then I said, he said, well, where are they? And I pulled them out and I showed them to him. He said, you haven't been taken. I said, well, let me tell you what happened. After I took the first day, I, you know, and the second day, I felt all right. So I stopped taking them because I thought, he said, that's your problem right there. If you'd have read the instructions on the Bible, it would have told you to take all of them. Amen? That's why they write the instructions on the Bible so you don't have to think. Amen? And I said, Doc, that'll put you right there. So God put a book together so we wouldn't have to think. All we got to do is read the instructions in the Bible. Amen. It makes, it makes a lot of sense, don't it? it? makes a lot of sense. So we're talking about what's called creative design. Creative design. Creative design. One of the reasons why that, that our churches are not being blessed, the reason why our lives are not being blessed, because we're trying to operate outside of creative design. Okay? And so what happened when he made Adam? He said, I'll tell you what to do. Let us make man. And God find the purpose why he made him. He said, we're going to make him after in our image and after our likeness. Yeah. We're going to make him in our image and after our likeness. Mm -hmm. Now, we have a very strong brotherhood ministry in our church. What we do with the men in our church is we got an image and likeness ministry. And what the image and likeness ministry is, and let's go back to creative design. How many men really understand image and likeness? And you're going to talk about all these other ways to be a man. You're a man when you're this, you're a man when you're this. God said, no, you're a man when you are cooperating with my purpose that I created you to be. I created you what? In image and likeness. Now, why in the world? Now, what in the world is image? What is God talking about with image? In other words, God is saying this. The way he actually made man, because he didn't create it, he made it. He created the heaven and earth for five days. Now, what is the difference between creation and making? Creation is when you could produce something from nothing. Okay? In order to make something, you gotta have something. So man was made, he was not created. He run everything else was created because he spoke it and it came to pass. When he got there to man, he made him out of the dust of the earth. Now granted, he didn't make him out of much, because not dirt, but dust. Because God can fix it when you couldn't duplicate it. So you can do something with dirt, but can nobody do nothing with dust. Uh, I wish I had somebody. Amen. Amen. You never heard nothing made out of dust. Okay. So when he made him out of the dust of the earth, he did something very unique with it. What he did, the Bible said he blew himself into man, and then man became a living soul. In other words, man became a soul that had life. And what is the life of a man? It's the presence of God living on the inside of him. Got it? Okay. So what does it mean by that? So why did God tell Adam, I want you to make you in our image? Why? Because I'm going to put myself in you, yeah. and you're going to be the visible image of the invisible God. That's right. So if folk want to see me and see what I'm like, see they'll see me in you. That's right. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's the whole idea of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. The Holy Spirit was not given to us to have us running around and jumping in churches. <laughs> The Holy Spirit was given to us so that we could be the visible image of the invisible God. So that folk would be able to see him. Oh my God. Oh my God. Amen. Because seeing is what going to attract people to him. See, people are not listening to our rhetoric. They're not listening to our rhetoric. We wonder why folk are not being saved because they're not listening to our rhetoric. You know why they're not being saved? They're not being saved because they don't like what they see. They really don't. In fact, you got a lot of people in your church that didn't really come for church. 
We got a lot of people. Maybe we have a night here in Richmond, Mother Augusta. I got a lot of people in my church. They don't really come from church. You know They come because they have a watching ministry. <laughs> the only reason why they come to church, they come to church to tell everybody what they saw. I wish I had somebody, amen. They don't bring no Bible, they don't bring no notes, they don't bring anything. They just come to see. And when they have discussions about church, it will be everything they saw. Amen. They can tell who sit close to each other, what sit close to each other the last time. They can tell who pocketbook didn't match who shoes. Everybody know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? And hey, granted or not, you got people in your neighborhood got to wash your bench. All they do is wash your house. Amen. They can tell you who coming in and who going out. They can tell you all of that. But why is seeing this so important? Because seeing this is attractive. People get attracted to God based on what they say. I say people don't have ears to hear, so they cannot hear. They have to respond to what they say. Oh. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that's why when Jesus said, he who got ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. And that's why I don't ever get upset at church when people don't respond to preaching. Why? Because some of you are don't just ain't heard anything. And you wonder sometimes, and you wonder sometimes how what you just heard, you wonder why nobody praising God out of what you just heard because you sit next to the chosen frozen and go to the front table, they just haven't heard anything. They haven't heard anything. So what the Bible is saying, basically, this is the responsibility that God has said to them. Go back and clean the design. I blew. I'm not at the Holy Spirit inside of you. Go back and clean the design. And how do you make sure that God is saved? Easily. Jesus died so you can live. Yes, sir. Now you die so he can live. Oh, yes, sir. That's what the Bible tells you in Romans 12. What? Present your body a living sacrifice. In other words, you sacrifice you so that the God in you can be seen. That's why Paul said, I have crucified with Christ. Yet not I live, it is Christ that's living in me. And Paul said, I die daily. Jesus said, hey, you're not going to follow me until you, number one, deny yourself. You've got to deny yourself or folk will see you, but they won't see him. So image is important. It is important because people are watching you. And I told you this before. You don't raise children about what you what, what they what you tell them. You raise children more about what they see. Because they don't even remember what you tell them till they become your age. When they get to be about six, when they get to be sixteen, 